In all my 27 years on the force, I've just never seen violence like this. Los Angeles just isn't the place where violent things happen. Certainly not in the world of kids' television. Eat your pancakes. But we want to watch TV! Why would the TV want to be watched by a bunch of ugly- Hello! La 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 Let's have fun! It wasn't just a children's show. I think audiences of all ages love Blah Blah the Clown. This guy was the definition of overnight success. I mean, his show was motherfucking iconic. What time is it? Yeah! But even the most beloved icons can have a dark side to them. At, at first I thought, how could anyone do this? And then I thought, probably with a knife. I was like, there's no way. There's no way my best friend could be a serial killer. Do you ever get angry, boys and girls? Sometimes it can be difficult to do the right thing. But you mustn't listen to that anger. For an angry clown is a clown nobody wants to love. <laughs> Three more bodies were found last night. The victims' faces were painted like clowns. Ladies and dicks, we're dealing with the goddamn psychopath! I didn't know what help was until I met Blah Blah the Clown. You do not want this man entertaining your children. Officials say what was written in blood were the words of a real doo-doo mouth. Look at him! That look like the face of a goddamn crazy person! My son was a difficult child. He'd just look at me with those big, dumb eyes, like staring into a pair of assholes. And he didn't know how to be a star. I was a goddamn star. This was taken 15 years ago. And how old are you there? 11. Tell me what you just said. I said you're a bad actress. Well, I don't know where his anger stems from. Go to your room, ugly! Fine, bitch! I'll go to my room and I'll do drugs and lose my fucking mind! Why can't you lose your virginity? Eddie was like a brother to me. Uh, we met back in high school. Oh, I hated his fat little friend. Dude, your mom's pissing in the sink again. This is my palace! The two of them were pranksters. You know the type. The kind you just want to fuck in the ass because they're so cute. But then you remember, hmm. They're full of shit because they're fucking assholes. I wanted to be a director, he wanted to be an actor, so we were the perfect duo. You've been humping up Desmond. Desmond's my brother. I knew you'd fuck your brother. Since I was seven. Ah. 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 Well, the joke's on you, bitch, because I took your pregnancy test and guess what? You got a baby in your body and that baby is mine. How was that? That was one of the best performances I have ever seen in my life. This performance is trash. Why would you show me this? You know what? Fuck you, Mom. Eddie was never able to make his mother proud. That's not how I taught you to wash your asshole. And when she crushed his dreams of being an actor, that's when he said, I hate you, Where and I'm going to run away from, from home. How about that? I'm not even buying this performance. Yeah, well, you better buy I it. I will not. Oh, well. Eddie wanted me to pack up my bags and move to Hollywood with him. Watch the pack your bags and move to Hollywood with me. Good idea. I thought you were going to move to Hollywood. What about my school and your family? What about my school and my family? Fuck your school and fuck your family. Fuck school! Fuck you! Run away! Alright, sweetie, you can stay here. Get back to your mom. Get back to your mom. Get back to your mom. I don't want that shit. You don't want your shit. Run away! We drove to LA and shared a small studio, and let me tell you, times were tough. I, I couldn't even land a job shooting porn. Yeah, I'll climax when you hold that fucking camera straight. Well, that was very rude. And Eddie sure as fuck couldn't land an audition. Hi, I'm, I'm Eddie Oswald, and I'm auditioning for the role of... Kid with Cancer. Cadaver 6. Ethnic Janitor. Yeah, yeah, can you not look at the script, please? How the fuck am I gonna know what the lines are? Don't bother going in there, they're just gonna tell you no. Eddie wasn't the best at taking rejection. We'll call you. Yeah, they call me yeah, the fuck you will. But one day, he wasn't rejected when he came in and auditioned for me. Clive Butler, founder of Butler's Sweets and Such. I was just two months away from rolling out my yummiest confection yet, the Blah Blah Bar. I just needed a young, fresh face to be the clown on the package. 
So, uh, you ever played Clown before? I don't think we're up for the same role exactly. Richie Goldberg for Blah Blah the Clown? That's me. All right, come on back. No, I, I'm Richie, I'm Richie. When I saw how passionate he was about clowning, I, I simply had to have him audition. I'm sorry, what the fuck am I auditioning for? It's a spokesperson for a chocolate bar we're rolling out next month. I thought this gig was to host a kid's TV show. Oh, it is. As soon as that pink makeup went on. I'm Eddie Oswald reading for Butt Butt the Clown. No, but that's not his name. I knew I'd found the face of my new candy. You want the part? I got the part! So we rented a shit little studio, sillied it up, and before we knew it, Quiet Time with Blah Blah the Clown was LA's number one kids show. Morning, children! I'm having such a great time! Or at least a genius marketing strategy disguised as a kids show. What's candy? Blah Blah Bars are a treat for you! If diabetes exists, why is it so hard to spell? Though there was one thing that heavily concerned me. The fame was getting to him. It, forget about these kids, it's about me. Yep, okay. I was the uh, stage manager of Quiet Time. Working with Eddie has been the worst experience of my life. And I lost my virginity to a jacuzzi. What are these two fuckers even doing here? We're your costume designers. Then why am I wearing shit? Eddie hated that the costumers had more style than him, but they were gay and married, so you know they think outside the box. You know what, just get out, just go! Not even God can love you. Honestly, fuck that guy. What? Everyone knew Eddie had anger management problems. Why am I the only shit stain on this goddamn set who's a fucking professional? Roll it! Hello, kids! He was becoming unhinged. What time is it, kids? Diabetes! Diabetes exists, you idiots! It became apparent we could no longer maintain a studio audience, so I brought in Wendy, a puppeteer. Oh, she was such an artist, making all sorts of this and that's to put her hand up. Another day in puppet paradise with Blah She is so good at her job. Eddie and Wendy really hit it off. Probably a little too well. Before long, I believe blowjobs were occurring even during production. So tell me more about Mount Rushmore. It was built in 1927. Uh -oh. <laughs> The fuck are you all looking at? It was obvious. There was some favoritism happening on set. Fucking are killing me. We're almost done. Can, can someone get her a pillow? Okay, no, not you. You get the fuck back over here and fix this mop that you were paid to make. Look, no one likes wig makers, but Eddie didn't have to be a dick. You can't say dick. Oh, he's being a real penis. Ow, ow! What the fuck is wrong with you? How much are you getting paid to be on my show? How much are you getting paid to make this? I'm sorry, did that hurt you? No. <laughs> I can't believe this shit. She is the only one in this whole room you treat with any sort of respect. It's I don't No, no, I've had it. I don't care who the fuck you think you are, but no one talks to me that way. I am finally going to say what everyone in this room wants to say. No one likes working with you, and in this town, that shit matters. Okay. No, no, you got to yell at me, now it's my turn. Tomorrow when I walk on this set, I want to be treated with respect. And you know what? Fucking hate clowns. It's bullshit. Maybe if one of us had gone with her, you know, made sure she was okay, it wouldn't have been the last time we saw her. 34 year old Deborah Tomlin was found brutally murdered in her apartment last night. Fingers are pointed at the host of the show who was allegedly the only one who had the motive to kill her. Well, I think the evidence is stacked against him like some lumberjack pancakes. There was absolutely no evidence that he wanted to kill Deborah. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Deborah! I don't care, that footage isn't proof. And they can use this as an admission in court! My name is Detective Penelope Pennybrook. My colleagues call me PP because we don't waste time. We're gonna need all these fingerprints cataloged by 11.30. My skills are unparalleled, which is why they called me to investigate Deborah's death. I'm on it. Immediately, something about this crime scene rustled my jimmies. She was beaten to death in the face with a hand mirror. Her body was found on the south side of her kitchen, which is a strange way to murder someone in a room full of weapons. What's strange is that there was no sign of forced entry or that anyone was even with Deborah that evening. So I spoke to the last person who saw Deborah that night. Well, I got home that night around 7.30, I believe. Saw the bits trying to unlock a door. You clown! You know what? Fuck you! I was just starting to feel good about my makeup! 
that was the last time I saw the bitch. I later I went home and had to pay my rent on cam. Oh, thank you, Dirty Tony sixty nine, for your hundred dollar tip requesting me to give you extra credit on your math final. God damn it, Tony Ramirez! I know it's you. After digging a little further, I unfortunately found the video in question. This is white girls want to suck your dick. If you look in the background, you can see clear into Deborah's apartment at the time of her death. New evidence has surfaced this morning. Proving Deborah's death to be a suicide. Looks like the only thing this clown was guilty of was being a poopy dick fart hole. Well, he's innocent. It looks like you were wrong. Well, I've been wrong before, Shira. Okay, well, coming up, if you eat this story... And I'll do it again! I knew that Eddie had something to do with her death. I just needed him to slip up. And then, February 27th happened. Eddie has some of the crew over at his house to celebrate his innocence with a game night. His lack of compassion was the first red flag. I mean, who celebrates after their colleague has just died? We're hanging out, we were playing some board games. The Chinese checkers particularly set him off. So we switched to Jenga, but that was even worse. Board games are pretty stressful, if you've ever played one. I busted out Twister. At approximately 7.30 p.m., a testicular mishap occurred over a game of Twister. That's when Eddie finally snapped. I remember him saying, ouch, my balls. And he started to get a little upset. Tensions are heated. Eddie accuses Rick of intentionally sabotaging his nutsack and throws him and his husband out of the house. Daniel tries to calm him down. The killers never calm down. Eddie can't contain himself. He follows Rick and Ronnie outside. Unfortunately, the home had no exterior surveillance, so what transpired between them is still unknown. What is known is the horrific aftermath of the next morning. I was taking out the trash around 10 a.m. when I noticed there was this big unopened package right by the door, and it didn't have a shipping or return address on it, just an image of a clown in what looked like blood. And I thought to myself, I don't think these are the lima bean balloons we ordered. I immediately rushed over to the studio. No! When I opened the package, I forever scarred myself and my staff. For inside the package was Rick's head. And this time, I had a hunch it wasn't suicide. Because how did he pay for shipping? He's a monster. He took away the only man who could rim his way to my heart. Approximately three weeks into production, the head of Rick Harper was anonymously mailed to the TV studio he worked at. With standard shipping! A gruesome week in children's television as two crew members were brutally murdered just days apart from one another. Police are investigating the show's host, Eddie Oswald, and his whorish puppeteer, Wendy Bundy, who both believe that despite these tragic events, the show must go on. The show will go on. How about that? Even if two of my beloved late colleagues are currently getting more screen time than me. Welcome back. Today we've got a great episode. And today, I mean it. I'm here with the man behind the clown that everyone is talking about, Eddie. You can call me Eddie. I did. Okay, let's move on. How does it feel to become a children's TV icon overnight? Well, I'll tell you, Connie, it's a goddamn dream come true, although technically we're not just a kid's show. We're actually produced by uh, Clive Butler, right over there from the Butler's Sweets and Shit Candy Company. He actually financed this entire show as a way to market the new Blah Blah Bars in stores in only a month. Did you murder Rick Harper, Eddie? I'm... I'm sorry? Your costumer, Rick Harper, you got into an argument at your house, and then his head was sent to your studio the next morning. Is that some sort of coincidence? I, I'd like to keep this about the blah blah bars, And this is just please. days after the very bizarre suicide of Deborah Tom, another crew member that you didn't get along with. You could tell Eddie was starting to crack. You know, every time he'd get stressed, he'd start eating that chocolate like it was ass. Your upbringing wasn't the best, was it, Eddie? Ah! This interview is over. Your mother created a very angry person, didn't she? You need to lose weight. Dr. Carl says I need to gain weight, Mom. Yeah, well, Dr. Carl is an in show business! All you needed was the pressures of your own show to make that inner child snap. Run! And just give me a comment. Did you kill Rick Harper? and Deborah 
come You know what? I said this is over! Oh my god! I want you to look into that fucking camera and tell all of your viewers everything he spit out is bullshit! He's bullshit! The gossip, the lies! I want you to tell them it's all one big joke! It's all one big joke! Say it again, bitch. It's all a joke. 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 Like I said, it's all a joke. And you can find more of this tomfoolery Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard. Blah, blah, blah. So delicious you could just die. Eddie's little media prank wasn't helping my company's image. And you know how hard it is to convince kids you're not gonna kill them? I do. It's quite hard. Blah, blah. Did you really kill those people? Oh, now, Percy, you know it wouldn't harm a fly. I know, but I'm sure they would have deserved it. They did deserve it. It wasn't working. And we only had one month left before the blah, blah bars hit the grocery stores and we need to clean up this PR nightmare. How? Everyone thinks I murdered that fucking asshole. Honest with me. Did you? You can't be serious. It's not too late to pin it on one of the kids. I can understand what Eddie was going through. Clown paint has a way of getting under your skin. I should know. I created Blah Blah the Clown when I was 18. I had just arrived in Los Angeles with a dream of becoming a successful clown who doesn't diddle the children. Little did I know it was my heart that would be diddled when I met Cassandra Butler. She owned a small candy shop down on Melrose in Fairfax. We were perfect for each other. I'd teach her how to clown around and she'd teach me how to make candy sweeter than an angel's kiss. Oh, and we made the 80s our bitch. She made the candies and I did the clowning to sell them on TV. So come on down. Then one day, she created it. The Blah Blah Bar the most delicious chocolate I've ever tasted in my life. We must have whipped up and devoured a batch of 30 bars that night alone. We were going to release it the day after we got married. But that day never came. Oh shit, it's been recording the whole time. She died with the recipe of that blah blah bar. I was able to keep the candy company in business, but nobody gave a rat's dick about my clowning anymore. I was just a corporate fool trying to live out his glory days. Until six months ago, I, I found an old box of Cassandra's belongings, including the recipe I'd been trying to recreate for three decades. I began production on the Blah Blah Bars immediately. I just needed a fresh new face to be Blah Blah again. And so I understand why Eddie's angry. Clowning is a very serious business. That's great. I still had a headless homo on my hands. Crime's no joke, and I'm no comedian. I take my job about as seriously as I take an anal fissure, and, and that's, that's pretty serious. Look who got sloppy. You know, I always said in my years of the field that murderers are some of the dumbest. Don't tell my captain. I questioned the only person who was with Rick that evening, his husband. I just told her it wasn't me. Which was a relief, because then I only had one more suspect. Look, whore, I didn't do it. Eddie, no one is suggesting that you're definitely the killer, but we want to get a sense I of- I am you. not a killer! But if I was, I would have slit him gut to gullet, and I would have told you I didn't do it! The trail had gone cold. I was out of suspects. Until, just before leaving the station, Eddie decides to stop for a little pee-pee time. Moments after, one Officer Ramirez enters that same restroom. The only difference was that Eddie was the only one to come out. An LAPD officer was found dead tonight with his goddamn throat slashed open. And that's all I needed to put that Pepto-Bismol pencil dick away. I didn't do it! My son was a little ass puke, and sooner or later everyone was gonna see it. Seeing my best friend in handcuffs? Now that's hard. And yes, I know that's what she said, but Eddie did not kill a cop. I was slightly relieved. Uh, just the day before, I was cataloging all of my evidence when I checked the time, destroying all my evidence, so I had to recreate all of my evidence, none of which would have held up in court. So, I mean, I suppose it was a blessing that Officer Ramirez was... Detective P had her head up her B. When Eddie found out she lost the evidence, he was pretty upset. God 
damn it, now I'm pretty upset. What are we gonna do, man? I don't know. That Detective P has her head up her B. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally gonna use that one later. It's a good joke, Daniel. There's no denying that. But now there's nothing to prove my innocence. You need to get a lawyer, okay? You're right. And I know just the guy. Did you kill somebody? No, you didn't! Shut the fuck up! Your Fifth Amendment right is so precious to me. I'll fucking kill you to defend it! And thanks to that right, I don't have to tell a fucking soul. So give me a call. I'll defend you so hard that I'll have to plead the fifth. <laughs> you get what you pay for. And Eddie didn't feel like paying for much. What the fuck did he say about me? Be honest with me. Did you do it? Of course I didn't do it. Eddie, I represent killers, not liars. You can't think I'm guilty. I don't think you're guilty, I just think you did it. Okay, we're gonna lose this, and if I'm going to die, then I have one last request. Talk to the warden. Let him let me shoot one final episode of Blah Blah. We can do it right here in this jail. The request seemed innocent, but I knew there was something much more sinister at play. When I heard Eddie wanted to shoot an episode from prison, I immediately said, I'm not paying for it. I, I just didn't understand why he would want anyone to see him that way. Good morning, children. You're not letting me do too much today. But that's all right. Because we have a very special episode in store. What's on today's agenda, blah, blah? Today, I'm getting the fuck out of jail. <laughs> Eddie was bolted to the table and that guard did not have a lick of keys on him. He doesn't have any keys! There's no time! Plan B! Plan B! I don't want to do plan B! I don't want to die here! I love you! I know! Just do it! You saw that shit? That bitch cut his hands off. Please just stop showing that day. You cut off my fingers, you bitch! Well, if you weren't moving so much! Just finish the job! <laughs> if you give me a second term, I'll be sure to clean up all the fecal matter I caused in the first one. That's because I believe the only clowns that deserve American freedoms are the ones in the Senate. We thought we'd lost those little shit stains. Officials have no whereabouts of the fugitives currently, but are advising residents to lock their doors and stay inside. These two assholes could be anywhere. Over to you, Flint. I was sitting in my car, eating my concha like normal. That's when I started them around in the corner. I said, oh my God, that boy ain't got no hands. I tried giving him a Mexican pad for his wrist, but then the girl said, give me your car. I said, excuse me. Then she proceeded to brand theft out of me out of my vehicle. Then they drove off in my car, leaving me on the ground to finish my concha. Hmm, I hope they crash. Well, we just crashed, kids, but that's all right because we got a special episode. We couldn't believe it. This crazy fuck was broadcasting his show on the run. How can I help you? My name's Don. I'm Dave. I'm Dick. And we're brothers. Hello, boys. My pal ain't feeling too hot. You think you can lend the clouds some hands? Holy shit, this guy needs to see a doctor. You'll do no such thing. He's gonna bleed out. Not if you give me the tools to build a new hand. Ah! Hey, 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 hey. You can't just build someone new hands, bitch. Oh, fuck you. I build puppets for a living, and I'll build what goes up their ass. That'll be 306.54. Run this, dumbass. Look at that stupid haircut. That stupid way you slide that card like it's through an ass it's declined. I am getting word that the card has in fact been declined. That's embarrassing and they should be embarrassed. Here, take some chocolate, asshole. We don't have any money. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right! <laughs> we got a couple of grabbing We don't take kindly to thieves. What do you say we show them what we do to thieves? <laughs> oh, I'm scared for you. We located the hardware store in Hawthorne, Nevada, but by the time we got there, all three employees, Dick, Dank, and Daniel, whatever their names were, were already murdered. Three more bodies were found last night. The victims' faces were painted like clowns. Do you know how it feels to keep getting to the murder scene after the murder has happened? I mean, I guess that's my job. Blah Blah's not feeling too well today, kids. <laughs> but don't worry, I have all the tools to make him feel better. We knew exactly where to find him. And bonus, I had gas in my car. Assholes. Hands in the air. Drop those knives. These knives are my hands, bitch. Distraction! Where? Pussy attack! This pussy is tough on crime. Run, Eddie! 
I had no choice but to break her ankle with my actual pussy. I had Eddie's hoe in custody. That little maggot was alone and on the run. All that titty baby knows to do is run away. This was now a nationwide manhunt. Which is why I'm deploying a federal SRT team to bring in this clown, commanded by American hero Lieutenant Cocksucker. Hey, I'm Lieutenant Cocksucker. Yeah, that's my name. Today our target is this clown homo with these robotic molester claws. Fucking hate clowns, sir. They're un-American. God, I got the best men a cocksucker could ask for. On today's episode, we're out running the U.S. military. What's gonna be a real doozy? Get out of the lake, you candy cane cock! Yeah, what are you gonna do about it, fat fell? Ah. Get your hands off me, you cocksuckers! For all I care, my son is guilty, and they can let him swing. Accused serial killer Eddie Oswald is standing trial today, and would you look at those ridiculous claws in the handcuffs? And it doesn't help his case that his attorney is a piece of shit. My client is innocent. But if he was guilty, he would murder each and every one of you fuckers for not believing him! His lawyer had some compelling arguments, but then I heard that prosecutor. Where were you the night of the murder, you guilty fuck? Guilty. Now I know what that word meant. It meant I needed to start paying attention. His mother was humping on John Wayne Gacy! Language! I'm from fucking Texas! I'll allow it! I never fucked John Wayne Gacy! I blew him between killings, but that was hot then. Daniel Clemens, a close friend of Oswald's, was the only person to speak in his defense. You people are putting away an innocent man! You know those two were butt buddies, right? <laughs> but it was ultimately the testimony of one individual that would determine the verdict. You're probably wondering how I got that clever little neck brace. Well. I made the mistake of visiting Eddie the day before the trial. I just sincerely hope you find the help you deserve, Eddie. Guys, the man who tried to kill you in this room right now. Yes. Yes? Could you point him out to us? Eddie was always such a good boy with a big heart. He's clearly someone who needs help, not punishment. If it, uh, if it pleases the court, I am willing to put up the funds to find Eddie the care that he needs. I was sold as soon as I heard funds. Mr. Butler kindly paid for a life sentence at Bremer Asylum, where we keep our patients laughing. <laughs> I'm Dr. Linda, and at the Bremers Asylum, we don't diddle our patients. Not even if they ask. We are one legitimate ass operation. If you we weren't, why would my name have doctor in it? I just hope the good doctors at the Bremer Asylum can help rehabilitate the young man. He was like a son to me. Los Angeles can rest easy knowing that another short-fused shithead is off the streets. Do I think Eddie did it? I'm not paid to think. I'm paid to judge. And my judgment is that I think he's guilty. It's hard to move forward from something like this, but the Blah Blah Bars will be in stores in a week, so I've decided to put my clown shoes back on and be the new Blah Blah. Tomorrow's a special day, because the new Blah Blah Bar is coming to you! Do I think I did a good job? Well, I let evidence do the thinking, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so careful about the evidence I select. I just want my car back. I sincerely hope the world learns from a story like this. Because all of it could have been prevented. Hey, it's Daniel from the dock. I hope this reaches you in time. When I heard Penny Brook discarded evidence, I dug through a trash and found what I believe proves that he's innocent. through evidence for three days straight, and I can prove without a shadow of a doubt that Eddie Oswald did not kill a single person. There is a mound of evidence, you
you are choosing to overlook. What is it you do again? I'm a cameraman. <laughs> and that's what we should be doing, is listening to a human tripod. Cameras are important. Not unless I supply evidence. I have evidence. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I knew I had to take matters into my own hands. First of all, none of these deaths make any sense. The only thing connecting them together is Eddie Oswald. And he wasn't even there when the first death happened. Why would Deborah kill herself with the hand mirror when there are so many other more useful weapons in that room? Oh, and what about that cop that Eddie allegedly killed in the shitter? He was the only one on the force that believed he was innocent. I am Eddie Oswald's number one fan, and I can tell you for a fucking fact that he's innocent. Bro, it's nine in the morning. Why would Eddie kill the only cop that believed he wasn't guilty? What about what's-his-face with his head in the box? Eddie told him and his husband to get out of the house, but no one's curious about what happened after Eddie followed them outside. Everyone just wrote it off that the house had no exterior surveillance. But the house across the street did. You can clearly see here that Eddie runs out to Rick and Ronnie's car before they leave, and he begins apologizing profusely. So why would Eddie cut off his head? So then I realized there must be something else connecting all of these murders other than Eddie. The blah blah blah. If you read the ingredients list in the back, you'll find the last ingredient is something called Halifax Harbosis, or Ha Ha for short. Halifax Harbosis was a drug manufactured in the 80s that makes you hallucinate that everyone's a clown. Sounds delightful, right? Yeah, it does. Wrong, asshole. 90% of test subjects suffered from the horrifying delusions and fits of rage. Turns out it was manufactured in a facility run by one Dr. Linda. That's right. Now I know what she meant when she said, We keep our patients laughing. <laughs> but even more strangely, another familiar face was in the room. Cassandra Butler was a student of Dr. Linda before abruptly getting fired. What the fuck make you go that goddamn deep? You're fired, bitch. Pack your shit and file this secret ass formula on your way out. I'm gonna steal this on my way out and make a fortune. Yeah, yeah, whatever, bye. As she left the facility, she stole the formula of Halifax Harbosis and began a new life of making candy and getting married. But stealing formulas comes with a price. Flatten the bitch. After Cassandra's death, Linda became the primary investor to Butler's Sweets and Such, letting it appear as if a clown can maintain a corporation. But why would she do this? My guess, in hopes of regaining her formula should it ever surface again. But Clive didn't know of the violent effects Halifax Harbosis could have on most people. You see, people like Eddie, Wendy, Clive, and Cassandra love clowns, so they would naturally love the high. But most people don't. Everyone knows clowns are killers. Extremely temperamental. Oh, I hate clowns. And for them, the side effects were fatal. Deborah Tomlin's neighbor said she was alone the night of the murder. You bet your ass she took one look in the mirror and saw a clown staring back. And what about Officer Ramirez? I pulled up the last five minutes of his body cam footage. Whoa, Eddie Oswald! Sorry to barge in yeah. like this. Here, let me close the door. Thank you. Uh, hey, look, I'm your biggest fan, and I just wanted to let you know that I know you're innocent. You think I'm innocent? Yeah, of course. <sighs> thanks, man. Everyone here thinks I'm guilty. Here, why don't you have a blah blah bar? Oh, whoa! Hey, get thanks. the stores soon. You're gonna I'm enjoy starving. them. Starving. Oh, hey, actually, sometimes how are you here? I just have a couple questions about the show. Can I pick your brain for a sec? Oh sh. This goes on for a minute. Are you a clown? Hmm? I'm a clown. So this chocolate makes you see that too, huh? I'll never be as good a clown as you. Oh, don't say that. I ah, ah, oh my god! And then there's Rick and Ronnie. If you look carefully, you can see Eddie handing them what is later confirmed to be a blah blah bar when they uploaded their last fashion vlog later that night. What's up, everybody? Homegrown, young, dumb, and full of calm. Wait, are you seriously eating chocolate after 4 p.m.? What the fuck are you trying to say? Married life, am I right? Sorry about that, guys. Married life, am I right? Today we're talking about- Clown! What the fuck is wrong with you? Are you still eating that goddamn chocolate? Sorry, guys. Post-Renaissance cufflinks. Really- ah! And what about that hardware store? I drove all the way to Hawthorne, Nevada to find surveillance footage that was never even looked at. <laughs> I'm scared for you. Move back, fuckers! I know how to scream! Donnie! 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 Oh my god! Stay with us! Stay with us! Don't just stand there! Call a fucking ambulance or something! By the time Clive figured out the dangerous side effects of his candy, 
he needed someone to take the fall for him. Eddie's a dickbag, but he would never harm someone unprovoked like he did in Clive's video. So I went to the jail and found audio of what actually transpired. The people I gave chocolate to killed themselves because clowns are shit. She loved clowning with me, and for once, the whole world is going to see things through her eyes. You're fucking crazy, you know that? Only the clown lovers are going to walk the earth among the blood of those who hated us. But we know the truth. Let's do this. Wait, what are we doing again? We're going to go bust my friend out of that asylum. What do you say? Well, they said no, but I'm going to just record all this myself and then send it to them later. Job for a reason. Oh, I knew he was gonna like you around here. If I die today, just know that I did it saving my best friend. And I hope that I get famous. Well, it looks like we have a special guest on today's episode, kids. Oh my god, it's you. <laughs> Colors as much as me? Eddie, it's me, Daniel. Daniel? <laughs> Don't you look behind you? What the hell are you doing here? I'm getting you guys out. You almost stick a clown horn in your ass. What's wrong with him? They keep shooting him up with that drug the chocolate has. Halifax Harbosis. Yeah, whatever the fuck you said. They keep him sedated on it every hour so that he fucking constantly thinks he's a clown. We have to get him out of here. Help me! I'm not going anywhere. I'm a steel clown. Hey! What the fuck is happening here? Uh... You know you nurses are not supposed to be dealing with the patients unless they had their drugs. <laughs> Wait. Uh, I'll do it. Well, hell, my sugar low anyway. What? Ah! Shit, Mark! Help me get him up! I'm not going anywhere! I'm the clown! 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 Where the fuck am I? What's the plan now, Eddie? The plan is, you go home, Daniel. But, but no, I... You, you've risked enough tonight just getting us out of here. This is not your fight. We must stand alone, together. That performance was pretty good. Huh? You like that? Let's make it into a movie. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. What? He's still gonna release that ass candy tomorrow. Oh, we gotta stop him. Let's go. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. You stay here. Sorry. Sorry. I really like the blah, blah, blah. It's good enough for me. I cannot eat just one damn bar. I must have two or three. I... What's up, ugly? Eddie. Don't you know no one likes clowns? You're, you're not supposed to be here. No, no, no. You're not supposed to be here. You kids think this cocksucker is your hero? He put us behind bars for a crime we didn't commit, and now he's gonna pay out his ass! What the fuck? Ah! You're going to prison for what you did, and they fuck men there. Please, can we talk about this in my office? Close the door. Let's talk money. How much you want? No negotiating, motherfucker. You're going to prison jail for what you've done to us in those candy bars I never see in the light of day. No, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna walk out of here as a man who saved a group of children from a murderous psychopath. What the fuck are you talking about? No, Eddie! Don't shoot her! Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? See you in the next life, clown! I am not a glitter, dick. Don't worry, civilian. Eddie Oswald can't hurt you anymore. Uh...
Well, don't we here at the news feel like a bag of dicks for accusing Eddie Oswald? Uh, of murder? I knew Eddie was innocent. I said it on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. Oh, you mean eatmyassjoe.org? Uh-uh, don't laugh at that. I'm with the clown that America now knows to be innocent, Eddie Oswald. So, Eddie, how does it feel finally not being a killer? Well, Connie, I never was a killer. Never said you were. You did. I beg to differ. Well, you better beg harder. Let's move on. And there it is. Guys, it feels great being innocent. Uh Uh-huh, does it? It fucking does. I now have my own video game, which made enough money for me to open my own line of restaurants in memory of my dead girlfriend, but we got sued because apparently there's some other place that has a similar look. And thanks to his contribution to the doc, Daniel's now one of the most prolific filmmakers in Tinseltown. I just want to congratulate you with the incredible and outstanding success with your career. It's just unbelievably amazing. Thank you so much. Do you have one last message for the boys and girls that you frightened? No, not to the boys and the girls, but my women and my men and my non-binary friends. When life gets you scared and your pants get soaked, it's all wasted fear. Because kids, it's all one big joke.